Android Studio version 4.1 is now available for download on the Stable channel. This new version of Android Studio adds new features, a database inspector, dagger navigation support, a native memory profiler, the ability to use the emulator directly inside Android Studio, but also importing TensorFlow Lite models, improvements for apply changes, and more. This version includes updates from NTJ 2020.1, such as a new commit tool window, which allows you to take advantage of the editor area to visualize diffs more comfortably, a new interactively rebased dialog where you can rework the Git history tree easily, switch between branches directly from the bottom bar, store run configurations files to be able to share them or import them in other projects, quick type definition pop-up without switching focus from your code, and Java Docs rendering within the editor. We've also updated the locations of user configuration directories to the following paths. These new directory locations are consistent with recent updates to IntelliJ ID. Storing data in an SQLite database is the common way to save structured information for Android applications. And Jetpack Room facilitates interactions with it. But Debugging and inspecting data inside a database is not always easy. With a new database inspector, you can check its values as well as query and modify them. To get started, deploy your app to a device or emulator running API level 26 or higher and select View Tool Windows Database Inspector from the menu bar. If your app makes updates to its database and you want to automatically see those updates in the inspector window, check the box next to Live Updates. We also added an integration for Jetpack Room. Android Studio now provides gutter actions to help you quickly run queries you defined using the Add Query annotations to avoid writing them manually in the inspector. Following the principles of dependency ejection, will help you better organize your application architecture. We created the Dagger library to help you with dependency injection, and more recently, the Hilt library to make it even easier. For projects using these libraries, Android Studio now provides gutter actions that help you navigate between your Dagger annotated dependencies and the parts of your code where they are used. You can also search those dependencies and their consumers when invoking find use agents. The Android emulator can now run directly in Android Studio to avoid switching between different windows and navigate quickly between the emulator and the editor area using hotkeys. Since we are extending capabilities to this feature over time, this is not turned on by default, and you need to click on the emulator tool window to enable it. We have invested heavily on getting faster deploy speeds with apply changes. After an initial deploy, subsequent deploys to Android 11 devices are now significantly faster. With our sample app Sunflower, apply changes to 250 milliseconds in average compared to two seconds and a half previously. In addition, you can now add methods without reinstalling your app by clicking either apply code changes or apply changes and restart activity. To learn more about the differences between those two actions, you can watch this video on how to use apply changes. Profiling your application is crucial to find out how to optimize it and use less resources. As the profiling process is consuming a lot of computer resources, we're adding the possibility to open the profiler in a standalone mode with a separated window from the primary Android Studio window. Using assertions in the Java code has been a common way to debug an application, but they were having no effect when run on Android device or emulator, as the Android runtime doesn't support assertions at runtime. When using Android Gradle plugin 4.1 and deploying a debug version of your app, the built-in compiler D8 rewrites your code to enable assertions at compile time so you always have the assertions checks active. This feature currently supports only apps written in the Java programming language, but support for Kotlin is coming soon. 
Android Studio now makes it easy to use machine learning in your app by directly importing TensorFlow Lite models and using them in your project. It will generate a binding class so you can run your model with less code and better type safety. To get the most from this new function, use models that have the new TensorFlow Lite metadata. We currently support models that use numbers and images as its inputs or outputs. This covers common machine learning model types such as image classifications and style transfer. For older models that do not have this metadata, or models that require other types of input outputs such as strings, the binding class will default down to tensor buffer rather than Android friendly types. This feature is still under development, so please provide feedback or report bugs on our issue track. Material design has been the recommended way to design applications on Android. And now, Android Studio templates in the Create New Project dialog use material design components and conform to updated guidance for themes and styles, supporting dark themes by default and using a more maintainable structure. You can read this blog post to learn how to migrate to material components for Android. The Design Tools suite in Android Studio is a powerful collection of tools that aims to support developers in designing, prototyping, and debugging their application UI. In Android Studio 4.1, we've improved the experience with these tools, including Design Time Attributes Toggle, to allow users to easily turn on and off tools visibility attributes and absolute positioning. A visibility control on component tree, providing a quick way to easily set show, hide, gone visibility for both tools and Android namespace. Visualizers and sliders to help with 3D rotation of views within the attributes panel. And more updates for the navigation editor and the motion editor. Check out this blog post to read more about these updates. This release of Android Studio includes a lot of changes beneficial to NDK developers. The first one is the native memory provider for apps deployed to physical devices running Android 10 and later. With a sample size of 32 bytes, the native memory profiler tracks allocation and deallocation of objects as well as their size in bytes in native code for a specific period of time. To initiate a recording, click Record Native Allocations at the top of the memory profiler window. When a crash occurs or when an app becomes unresponsive in native code, the system produces a stack trace, which is a snapshot of the sequence of nested functions called in your program up to the moment it crashed. These snapshots can help you to identify and fix any problems in the source code, but they must first be attached with symbols to translate the generated machine code back into human-readable function names. If your app or game is developed using native code like C++, you can now upload debug symbol files to the Play Console for each version of your app. The Play Console uses these symbols to symbolicate your app stack traces, making it easier to analyze crashes or unresponsive events. Before you can upload debug symbol files, you must be using Android Gradle plugin version 4.1 or higher. Check out the documentation to follow the instruction to enable this feature. Android Gradle plugin 4.0 added the ability to import prefab packages in AAR dependencies. With Android Gradle plugin 4.1, you can now publish libraries from your external native build in an AAR for an Android library project. To publish your native libraries, add the following code to your library build Gradle file. In this example, the my library and my other library libraries from either your NDK build or CMake external native build will be packaged in the AAR produced by your build and each will export the headers from the specified directory to their dependence. You can now set the path to your local NDK installation using the android.ndk path property in your module's build Gradle file. 
If you use this property together with the Android NDK version property, then this path must contain an NDK directory with the same version as android.ndk version. Enjoy Android Studio 4.1, and remember that we are listening to your feedback on our bug tracker. Check out early builds of Android Studio 4.2 on the Canary channel. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notified for new content and share this video with your friends and colleagues. See you soon.